the most important thing when it comes to obviously f the professional game is the match day. So if we can get more accurate information in terms of what our players are doing in a match day and then affect that going into and coming out of games, then obviously we're trying to prepare our players best to affect performance. And obviously if we can keep our players fit, pick our best players fit, then obviously we get the best results. Research shows us that. So obviously if we're in the ability to import the XYZ raw data's coordinates within to Viper, this is giving information in terms of the, the, the actual nature of what they're doing in terms of the high metabolic load, which is broken into sort of the explosive distance and the high speed running components. So this is giving us a make of in terms of in terms of we have a threshold for your player. When are they taxed outside their boundaries that they're normally taxed outside of? So ultimately this is basically giving us an objective rec recovery tool. So if we're looking at just say the high end ones for example, so we always talked about high metabolic distance which is split between the two and then decelerations for example and sprint distance, these are the ones that are most likely going to influence recovery status of the player, especially when you have multiple games going into into a European fixture or a heavy con fixture congested period. I think it's just that understanding in terms of what players are actually doing during a game. I mean, obviously the nature of the game affects how much that actually, what the physical output the players actually give. So almost it's giving us a measure of the work that they performed in a game. It's not sort of showing us how they perform in terms of relation to fitness. It's giving us an objective mark of terms how much work has that player performed relative to what they normally would do. So are they going a certain number of standard deviations above their normal match average? So have they been stressed to what they overly have? So that ultimately that information then can be relayed to the coaching staff and say, look, this player's done more than what he normally does. It might be worth going to sort of that session. He might have recovery on the Monday. That session where we do to change, so that might be that minus four day, that ultimately he's either has a reduced session, so he has a, some element of protection. So it's just maybe a reduced number of yeah. games. It's not only dictating to the coach what you want to do, it's sort of trying to protect the player and just being subtle with your advice across. I mean, I think there's three sort of categories in terms of how we can look at the track of data look, going on in sort of the, the next couple of the year or so. It's in terms of looking at it from the rehab point of view, looking at it from terms of the training point of view, and then splitting that into two again. So in terms of if we're looking at a game, we're looking at intensities during a match play, say we, we almost know that the scoreline obviously it has a high influence on, on the work rate in games. So if we're behind in games, can we drill off and look at five, ten minute periods? Or if we're losing the game, can we do the same, drill off five, ten minute periods and look at those intensities during those periods? So in terms of positional, what are players doing per minute? If we look at explosive distance for a centre half, for wingers, are we looking at high speed running per minute? What are the maximal sort of intensities they're working at in both that offensive and defensive state, depending on the game state? So all we're yeah. using it from that point of view. We'll probably continue to look at it in terms of recovery aspect as well. So we've got sort of threshold boundaries for each player when they go outside of that boundary. Do they need extra recovery and be protected going into match days leading up to? Then using it from a rehab tool, if we know the ratios and of how players are working in terms of that splitting that high metabolic load distance from explosive and high speed running, we know how we should be conditioning our players going back into training. And put a couple of examples in there. So we have some players, so example Leon Osman. We know that he doesn't perform a high number, a large amount of sprint and high speed running, but we know he, he accumulates a high amount of explosive distance to make up that to make up that high metabolic load. So that means he's exposed to a high amount of deceleration volume.